All right, so first question, a line passes through the points A, negative 2, negative 5, and B, 1, 13. Find an equation of the line in gradient point form, gradient intercept form, and general form. First of all, keep in mind that in IB courses, we, the word gradient refers to what we usually call slope. And so I'll go back and forth, but generally, I, when I'm just talking about something, I'll use slope. But in the vocabulary of IB courses, they use gradient. And so the first thing I would really recommend doing here is making a quick little visual of what's being described. Point A, negative 2, negative 5, let's say around here. And B, 1, 13, I don't know, let's put up here. And the idea is we are imagining a line that goes to these two points. And so I'll draw that line. All right, and so this line can be expressed in many different equations. Uh, first, let's if I want to find any of the equations, I need to find the slope or the gradient of this. And as you may recall, the slope is the same as the rise or the difference in y coordinates div divided by the run or the difference in x coordinates. So in this case, uh, if I want to use the formula straight up, I can call this x1, y1, call this x2, y2. And so in this case, my rise is, is going to be 13 minus negative 5. And my run is going to be 1 minus negative 2. I've got a lot of double negatives here, so that's really the same as 13 plus 5 over 1 plus 2, which is 18 over 3, or 6. And so my gradient of this line is 6. My slope of the line is 6. Notice it's a positive number. I can quickly see from my quick little sketch this line is going up from left to right, so that seems to be pretty good. All right, now I can find the equation. Uh, of these, the first one we ask for is gradient point form, and that's because that's probably the easiest to get started with. Gradient point form looks like this, also known as slope point form. If we know a single point and the slope of a line, we can find the equation almost immediately. And I know the slope and I know two points. So I'll just pick one of these. I'll pick x1, y1 for that. And then we're pretty much done at that point. So y minus y1, which is, again, y1 is negative 5. So I'll, instead of writing minus negative 5, I'll write it as y plus 5 equals a slope times x minus x1. And x1, again, is negative 2. Instead of writing minus negative 2, I'll just write plus 2. There we go. There's our equation in gradient form. Sorry, gradient point form, I should say. All right, next we, I ask for it in gradient intercept form or slope intercept form, which is the most, one of the most standard ways of expressing a linear equation. So I'll distribute this and bring the 5 over. So I get y equals 6x plus 12 minus 5, or y equals 6x plus 7. And this is what we call slope point form, <clears throat> or sorry, <laughs> I can't speak today. This is what we call slope intercept form or gradient intercept form. Lastly, we want general form in which we have all our variables and all our terms on one side. We also want to have our x term being positive and we want everything to be a integer, so whole number. Um, and the, we want the x coefficient to remain positive. So in this case, to make it in general form, all I got to do is subtract y from both sides and we're pretty much done. We have 0 equals 6x minus y plus 7. All right, uh, and so before I move on, if I were to graph any of these equations in Desmos, for example, it'd all make the exact same line. Uh, the most convenient one is probably this, because it's solved for y. All right, a straight line has the equation 15x minus 3y plus 4. Determine the x and y intercepts as well as the gradient of the line. So I have an equation here in general form. I can find the x and y intercepts quite quickly. If you want to find the x intercepts, that's where my y coordinate equals 0. Any function crosses the x axis where its y coordinate is 0. And so if I want to find the x intercept, I want to make y equal to 0. And if I look at my equation, if I make my y 
variable zero, this becomes 15 x minus three times zero, which is 15 x minus zero, which means I don't really need that minus zero anymore there. And so I can, if I replace y with zero, my general equation really becomes 15 x plus four equals zero, which I can quickly solve to get x equals negative four over 15 which I'll leave as a fraction, it's not the nicest decimal. As a coordinate, this is negative 4 fifteenths, comma, zero. There's the x-intercept. Similarly, if I want to find the y-intercept, I want to make my x-coordinate equal zero. And if I look right here, if I make that x equal zero, I have 15 times zero, which means, once again, that term, essentially, I can ignore, it becomes zero. And so this equation becomes just minus 3y plus 4 equals 0. And so we quickly get minus 3y equals negative 4. Divide both sides by negative 3. y equals 4 thirds positive, right? Because when you divide both sides by negative 3, I have a negative divided by negative on the right-hand side. And written as a coordinate, my y coordinate, my y-intercept, I should say, is 0 comma 4 thirds. All right, lastly, we want the gradient, or again, the slope of the line. We have a lot of options. I could, if I was to do this first, I could just look at this equation and solve for y right away, put it into slope intercept form or gradient intercept form. But I've already found the x and y intercepts. So to find slope, I can just use two points. I have two points. I'll call this x1, y1, x2, y2, and just use the equation I used before. Slope is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, which ends up being quite pleasant because I have a lot of zeros here. So if I do this, I get 4 thirds minus 0 over 0 minus negative, so plus 4 fifteenths, which brings me to 4 thirds over 4 fifteenths which simplifies actually quite nicely. Uh, you could just use a calculator, or you could just remember dividing any fraction by another fraction, same as taking that fraction and multiplying by the reciprocal, so 15 fourths. My fours cancel out. I have 15 thirds, which is the same as just five. There's my gradient. Or you could just go to your calculator. Remember, in an IB course, you are encouraged to use a calculator anytime you want if you think it's going to be helpful to you. And you can just go 4 thirds divided by 4 fifteenths, should get 5. There's the gradient. Lastly, I want to talk about parallel and perpendicular lines. In general, if two lines are parallel, they have the exact same slope. And so the slope of one line should be the same as the slope of another line, exactly the same. If lines are perpendicular, their slopes are definitely not the same. They are opposite reciprocals which means if you take the slope of one line and multiply it to the slope of the other line, you get negative one. Um, so with that said, let's first focus on the easier part, parallel lines. And so if these two lines are parallel, I want to find the value of k. And notice k is only in my second equation. And so if these two equations here represent lines that are parallel, they should have the same slope. So let's first find the slope of this line right here because I have everything I need to find it rather quickly. So let's focus on... 2x plus 4y minus 1 equals 0. So to find the slope of this, if I solve for y, I can see the slope because it's in slope intercept form. So I get 4y equals negative 2x plus 1. Divide everything by 4, I get y equals negative 1 half x plus 1 quarter. Again, right here, I divided everything by 4. Now, the y-intercept of one quarter, I don't really care about. What I care about is the slope right here. This first line is a slope of negative one-half. So now I can start to go back to this question because if these two lines are parallel, then I know this equation here must also have a slope of negative one-half. So what do I do next? Well, let's do the same idea for this. Let's leave that as a k, but let's isolate. Let's put this, sorry, let's put this into slope-intercept form the exact same thing I did before. But I know I got a k there, so, so let's just leave it like that for now. I got kx minus 3y plus 2 equals 0. So let's solve for y again, just like I did before. So I'll get negative 3y equals negative kx minus 2. 
and then divide everything by negative 3, I get y equals k over 3x plus 2 thirds. And again, divide everything by negative 3. I got a negative divided by negative here with the k. So instead of negative k divided by negative 3, same as just k divided by 3, and then divide this by 3. Like before, I don't really care about the y-intercept. I do care about this because this here that I'm highlighting in green represents the slope of the second line. And if I want these two lines to be parallel, these two should be the same thing. And so now I'm ready to actually answer these two questions. So if these lines are parallel, if parallel, then I want that negative one half to equal k over three. Because if two lines are parallel, their slopes are exactly the same. And so now I can solve for k. And I, what I would do is multiply both sides by three and I'm done. I get negative 3 over 2 equals k. So if the lines are parallel, k should be negative 3 over 2. What if they're perpendicular? Well, this time, uh, if two lines are perpendicular, this and this should represent opposite reciprocals of one another. Or, like I mentioned up above, this times this should equal negative 1. And for this question, that's probably more helpful. So I'm going to write negative 1 half times k over 3. This must equal negative 1. And so how do I solve this? Well, I can just simplify this a bit. Top times the top, bottom times the bottom. On the left-hand side, I have negative k over 6 equals negative 1. Multiply both sides by 6. Actually, multiply both sides by negative 6 to cancel all of that out. And I get just k equals positive 6. And so if the two lines are perpendicular, that k value should be 6. And so I just want to make a quick little visual for this. That means if I were to graph, and I will go to Desmos in a second, if I were to graph this equation and this equation but replace that k with a three, negative 3 over 2, we should see two lines that are parallel. If I do the same thing, but instead of that k, I put 6, we should see perpendicular. In fact, that's all I'll show. So what I'm going to do is go to Desmos here. I'll graph the first equation, which was given to us. All right, that's the first line that was given to us. But for the second equation, instead of kx, if I put 6x minus 3y, plus 2 equals 0. Notice I see two lines, and if I zoom in, they clearly connect at a right angle. And that's just kind of confirming that I'm correct.